At the end of his gospel, as he's recounting the various glorious resurrection appearances of Christ, St. John the Evangelist tells us with refreshing clarity what the point is of his writing this entire book in the first place. He writes it so that in reading it we might come to believe, and in believing we might have life in the name of Jesus. Simple, to the point, and beautiful. And it raises a very important question for us. To what extent are we following St. John's example? He certainly witnessed and experienced a great deal in Jesus. He was there all the way to the end at the foot of the cross, and he obviously was one of the eyewitnesses to the resurrection. Most of us have not gotten to experience something quite so profound. But nonetheless, every single one of us has experienced the Lord's presence in some unique and wonderful way in our life. Now, when that happens, do we keep it to ourselves, or do we shout it from the housetops? Yes, there might be a cost to shouting it from the housetops. We risk the ridicule of the world, and perhaps even a violent backlash. There's no question about that. But if we don't, if we keep this to ourselves, either out of fear or some sort of perceived politeness, not wanting to step on the toes of others, how does the message continue? How does anyone come to believe, and in believing, find the abundant life that Jesus Christ offers us? There's only one option. There's no plan B. It depends upon us. So let's follow the example of St. John and his gospel. When we witness or experience some sign or wonder that we are quite certain is the work of God and Jesus Christ, let's talk about it. Let's share it. Obviously find appropriate moments and ways of doing that. But when we do, we, following in the footsteps of St. John, become the gospel evangelists of today, and the message propagates and moves on throughout our generation and the next. More and more people find the abundant life that is being so generously offered to us by God.